recently somebody asked about using hyperlinks or links from PowerPoint slides to other content like a website, a YouTube video, or even a file from another application like Excel, Word, or uh, a PDF. And they asked, how does that work in a virtual meeting? See, in an in-person meeting, it's really quite easy. It just shows up on the screen and you're still there. So you're the visual continuity. But how does that work in a visual in a virtual meeting? Because on Zoom or Teams, how does it know to go and use that content to share with the attendees instead of your slides? Well, see, that's the challenge. It doesn't know. How would it know? It, it doesn't know what you're wanting to do. It's still showing your slides. So what can we do within PowerPoint and using this on Zoom or, or Teams to be able to link to other content in our presentations? Let me show you what I think uh, is a good strategy to use. And it involves, first of all, creating the slides in a certain way. So the hyperlinks, the links that you use on your slides are going to be more effective, I think, if they are images of what you are going to be showing. So I'll just move the, uh, the video out of the way here a little bit, make it a little smaller as well so we can uh, see the content here. So these are my slides here. And what I have done here is I've taken a screen capture of each of these uh, particular links that I want to use. So this is a link to a website. Uh, the next one is a link to a YouTube video. And then we have a link to uh, an Excel file, just three examples there for you. So what I've done is I've used a screen capture. So you can do that with screen capture software, just simply within Windows, use uh, the Windows key shift S to do a, a screen capture, draw the rectangle around or on the Mac, it's uh, command shift four. You take a screen capture, you put it in on your slide, and then you have to add the link. So let's take a look at the links on these different types of images. So this first link here, the way you do that, by the way, is you go to insert and then you go to link. And so what I've done here is I've simply pasted in the URL from the browser. So I, I copied it from the browser, pasted it in right here. So it goes straight to that particular page on uh, my website. So that's one way to do it. If you're using a YouTube video here, what URL should you put in? Well, YouTube will actually tell you. So let me flip over to YouTube here. So when you're looking at a YouTube video, look at the share button down below. And when you click on that, it'll say to you, hey, here's the link. And here's the neat thing is it allows you to say, do you want to start at the specific spot or time code where you are right now? And if you do, just click that checkbox. And you notice it added a little bit of code to the end of the URL. Now you can copy that. Now it's copied to the clipboard. And we can go back to our slides here. We'll go back to showing uh, my videos well here. So we go back to our slides and on our slide, when we take a look at the link here, I've just pasted it in and you notice it has the time code. So that's a good way to do a YouTube link if you want to start at a particular spot within that video. And then finally, if you are going to a file, this is an Excel file, for example, what you can do is when you say insert link, it allows you to then use this little um, file explorer, the browse icon here, to go and browse through your computer, find the one you want, and click OK. And so then it puts the full uh, path in for this particular file. Of course, if you are moving it to another computer and that file isn't there, the link won't work. But since you're doing it virtually, we're still working on our own computer. So that's the way we add our links. Now, how do we actually share this in our presentation in when we are actually delivering the presentation? So the key thing here is to share the screen, not a window. So what we want to do is we want to have two screens and we set up that second screen as where all of the content is going to be. So within PowerPoint, easy to do because we just go to the slideshow ribbon. And with our monitor list here, we drop this down and we select which monitor do we want the slideshow to go on. So I'm going to select my monitor three here. That's the one where I want the slideshow to be. Now I have to make sure that the other applications, in my case, it's going to be a browser and it's going to be Excel, are also on that screen because I'm going to share the screen. And when they come up, I want the audience, the, the attendees to be able to see it. So I'm going to take my browser here. I'll close this window. I'm going to take my browser 
and I'm going to drag that over to that particular screen that, uh, that I have, and I'm going to make it full screen. So I've made it full screen so that when it opens up with the link, it's going to be full screen totally covering up my slides. Now I'm going to do the same thing with Excel. I'm going to open Excel here. And again, I don't have to open it to the specific file that I want to show. I just need to open it to, let's say, a blank workbook. I could even uh, close this workbook if I wanted to. So uh, I'm going to drag this again over to our screen where it's going to be and again I'm going to make it full screen here. So I have my two applications open so whichever applications you're using open those up on that screen and now what we can do is we can enter into our slideshow mode and then in zoom share that screen. So I'm going to go into slideshow mode I'll start from the beginning here in my PowerPoint and you'll notice I am using presenter view which allows me to uh, access it. I'm going to take it out of the full screen mode, but you can see in the uh, the Zoom recording how it is showing. Uh, it, it's going to be showing that slide when I share it because it's going to show the screen. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to in my Zoom controls here. I'm going to say I want to share, and I'm going to share the full screen three, which is that that screen where I set everything up. So I'm going to click on share. And you'll notice now the audience is seeing my slides, which is exactly what they're supposed to see. I, as the presenter, still see my uh, presenter view here. So I have all of my tools in presenter view that I can use here. And I can make that bigger if I want to see my notes a little bigger in the slides. Now, you'll notice that my zoom control bar is uh, at the top. That's because I've set the option to put it always there so I don't have to try to find it. Now when I want to activate one of these links, what I do is I simply move my mouse over the link in presenter view and I click on it. And you'll notice what happens is on that screen where my browser is, it opens up that particular website. Now you'll notice there was a bit of a delay there. So you do want to plan these transitions. You want to plan how are you going to talk through this while you're waiting for that content to load. You'll also notice that because it's sharing the whole uh, slide or the, the whole screen, it, you're seeing the toolbar down at the bottom, down here at the bottom. So one of the things you might want to consider doing is, is in, the, in Windows, hiding the taskbar or in Mac, hiding the dock. When I'm done with this particular example, I've, I've talked about whatever I want on this website, I can either close the browser or I can minimize it and I'm back to my slides. Now I'll move my cursor back to the presenter view, click in to presenter view to, to change the operating focus, operating system focus back to the slides, and I'll go to my next slide. Now this one, I have a YouTube video. So again, I move over it, I click on it, and it will open in the browser to that particular time code. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that because this particular video has ads on it, it's a monetized video, you will see one of the ads come up there and it will show how I can skip to, to uh, pass those ads uh, by clicking on the button here and then it plays the video. Now one of the things when you're playing a video is, I'm just going to pause here for a sec, because what I want to do is to make sure that you remember when you're going to play a video to turn on the system audio. So I'm going to click on the more here and I'm going to say share computer sound so that now it's sharing it with Zoom. You might also want to consider this other one here, optimize screen sharing for video clip. That's going to make the video look better to your attendees. And now I can just simply click and play when this particular video. Presenter and because I'm sharing a video, it's going to the attendees. They're hearing that audio uh, as I go along. I'll just pause that. When you go into so when you're done with the particular video, again the browser, I can minimize it. Go back to that slide, and here's where I might want to turn off the optimized screen sharing and turn off the computer sound because I'm done with the video. I'll go back to presenter view. I'll go to my next slide. And this is my Excel file. So I can say now let's go take a look at Excel. So I click on this link and what it will do is it will likely give you this warning. 
so what it's doing is it's a security warning and it's saying hey this is a linked file are you sure you want to do this now nice thing is it shows up on my screen not showing up to the attendees so I'm gonna say uh, do I want to continue I'm gonna say yes because I put the I put the hyperlink in so I know it's safe so I'm gonna click on yes it will now open up Excel and because Excel is open on that other screen it will open up that file uh, in Excel and uh, sometimes what will happen is that it opens it up uh, without coming over your slide so you might need to click on it uh, in the taskbar down below it's one of the good reasons for having presenter view not in full screen mode but in window mode now I go over to Excel and notice this is full Excel Excel is running I can edit anything I can say oh, okay so let's say uh, we're doing a quote here for equipment financing you do want the extra storage okay well let's copy this now you put it here and let's see what does the monthly uh, payment change to and we can see and we can talk about that and because it's it's full Excel I can save it I can not save it I can save it as a new name whatever I want to do it is there and and it's full functionality of that program so whether it's word and you're adding text to a particular document the attendees are seeing it because you're sharing that screen that they're seeing when I'm done again I can minimize Excel and it's back on my slides and I have now completed what I wanted to share in the slideshow so in zoom I can go ahead and say okay if I'm done I can go ahead and stop sharing now the uh, meeting attendees are not seeing that particular screen anymore they're just seeing me and so when you are using links within PowerPoint and you are sharing it in a zoom or teams meeting think about making sure that you have added the links to images so there's that visual consistency set it up so that everything goes to a screen and then share a screen in zoom it's important that we share a screen and not a window if I go to the share screen just to show you this here notice how the screen screen 3 and this window here look virtually identical but one is in the screen section and one is in the window section you want to make sure you share the screen because if you share the window it's just sharing that window and anything else that comes on top the audience will never see it so make sure you share the screen and then when you activate the hyperlinks that content comes up on that screen the attendees see it and you have added richness to your presentation by bringing in content from different locations whether it's websites Excel PDF Word wherever it is and you've done it through links within PowerPoint so that's how you use links within PowerPoint to other content when you're presenting in a virtual platform like Zoom or Teams if you found this video helpful there are three things you can do to help me out first click the like button below the video on YouTube second leave a comment with any questions or feedback and third subscribe to my channel check out my websites and other videos with more tips and advice thanks again for watching